Hey, what's up guys? Cracker here. Welcome back to the channel. Have you ever tried to set up a grid layout and you had to end up pulling your hairs out because you couldn't figure out why it's just not working, why the grids are not just aligning the way they are supposed to be. Grid is supposed to be one of the most easiest layout options for CSS layouts. It's supposed to be a tool that makes it very easy to have different kinds of layout easily, far easier to use than CSS Flexbox. But in some cases, you see a grid layout that you feel this is pretty simple. I can do this. After all, it's grid. And then you, you set out to accomplish it and it becomes a nightmare. And you cannot for the life of you figure out why it's just not working. Well, in this video, I'm going to tackle one of the easiest grid layouts, but surprisingly a very tricky one to do. So someone showed you this grid layout on the screen now and says, can you do this using grid? And your question being someone who has used grid before would be, Wow, it's, it's very simple layout. What? You just do a three column grid, span two here, and span, uh, span two, column span two, row span two, and you're done. That's all. Well, let's see if that's all. So I'm going to attempt to replicate this in Bricks. I'm going to go back into Bricks build. I'm going to add a section, and then I have a container here. Uh, this makes use of query loop. So it's most especially if you're using query loop, okay, it becomes tricky because uh, if you're using single elements, it's easy to target one, just click one and do row span, click the other one. Uh, so we're going to be using query loop because these are posts. So I have six posts here that pulls in the post and the post data. So in Bricks, I'm going to add a block in here and that block is going to be my loop item. So I'm just going to call that my postcard. I'm not going to give these classes because this is just a one-off. I'm not planning to repeat this, you know. So simply what people do is, okay, you have a grid and then here you just have two items. So let's say you have this and this is already, ha this already has a background. So you could assume, all right, it has a, a wrapper, I mean the title, and then you have the image. So yeah. So yeah, let's drop the image. And then now uh, I'm using advanced thema. That's why I have this shortcut here. If you haven't seen my video on advanced thema, I'm going to link it at the top right corner. Of course, you can come here to click and then search for the element you want to add and add if you're using bricks for the first time. So uh, if you're using bricks for the first time, you're not going to see this. This is uh, an add-on that gives me the shortcut. So I'm going to add that. And then I'm going to add another block that will be my uh, title wrapper. And then I'm going to add my heading. Probably just want it to be an H2. So because I want to use a post loop, I'm going to come here to the postcard and turn that to a query loop. And then here I'm going to select post. So I think by default it is post, but I just want to ex explicitly set that. Then here is going to be my featured image for the post. And then here is going to be my post title. So right now I have my uh, data pulled in from the dynamic uh, content. Now I want to go to the container, which is the loop parent. That is going to be the grid parent. And then I'm going to set it to display grid. Uh, I'm using a CSS, so I, I can just quickly make it grid three. Now what we are having here is one, two, three grid. Okay, that's uh, columns. And I want to give it a gap of extra small. So we have that three, uh, three col column grid. If you're not using a CSS, you could just do a uh, repeat and then type three, one FR. So I'm using SCSS. So I'm just going to get, go ahead and just use three column grid here. What next? What are we going to do next? Uh, the next thing we want now we have these. I just want to quickly give that a background. Sorry. I meant to do that on the title. That is uh yeah, let's do that again. I have these. Okay. And then I want to give it um, a padding. So five, five, then space M here, space M here. Okay. So I have that and things are not really looking the way uh, they're supposed to look. Let's go to the front end. First of all, let's attempt to make it, um, you know, let's just try to make it straight. Okay. Now the problem we're having here is that we're having images of different sizes. So you, at, at first you begin to see the problem you encounter, uh, grid is supposed to be easy, but once you put an image like that, you begin to see issues begin to arise. Let's say there were no images. Let's say I pulled out this image. Okay. There were no images and I save it, go to the front end. My grid looks perfect. Let's say I had uh, another block there and I had a minimum height set to it. Let's say just, or just maybe I gave it a height of, let's say 300 pixel. And I gave it a color, a background color of uh, like that. Come here. My grid looks perfect. You see, it looks perfect. And anything I want to do there, I will do it. Okay. So now let's work with this. Now, because I want to show you the problems you would face in certain scenarios. Now we work with this and, and this is a dynamic content. So we want to achieve this layout using this. 
So what I'm going to do now is now the postcard. Now this postcard, I want to go here uh, to the custom CSS because we want to span the first one, two rows. If we go in here, here, and just go to uh, layout, and you see it, it has a grid child property, and we say uh, grid column span two, grid row span two. Now you see that it spans all of them you see it spans all of them we want to span only the first one and because we're in a query loop we cannot select just one uh we we there's no way to select it here there's no way to select it here so what you have to do is just turn that off go to the custom css and then say root now you're selecting this postcard but then you want to select the first child uh, that is the nth child selector that is the the first child or you could say uh nth child one nth child then you put it in a bracket and you say one is the same as first child. So uh, maybe I would recommend you use this because you can e easily reuse this and replace that with two. So I'm going to just open and close this. Then I'm going to say grid column. And that is going to be span two. Okay, we have that. And then I'm going to say grid row. That's going to be span two. So we have that. Let's save this. Go to the front end. And we have this spanning two. We have this actually spanning two but the problem is that these now you see the problem we have here okay uh these already had a set height these already had a set height this block so uh, that is not going to grow higher than so let's say we change that to a minimum height let's say it's a minimum height okay not a height so let's say minimum but it can grow more than that you can see that we are still having the problem it is still not growing and filling this so the question you ask yourself why is it not filling now if you check the if i inspect this you can see that it's actually filling okay it's actually filling this but it is not you know filling up you know visually so you begin to run into problems like this now uh the thing is when you declare uh when you do a grid the the rows are you know implicit like that means you don't have to explicitly set them so if I go back to the parent, which is the grid parent, and then say grid template row, and I said, all right, let's set the row. Okay, we have one, two, three. Let's say uh, the same thing, grid three. Now we have the same result. Now, if we change it to grid four, you can see it adds empty cells here. So let's say we make it grid three, and then we say save. You see, you still have the same result. Nothing changes. And this is something I would very much discourage you from doing you should never never put these grid template rows okay because especially in a query loop when you're using with dynamic content because you're going to have empty rows if the number uh let's say the number of items are more let's say you, you put grid two here okay so you're saying it should have just two but now you end up having three it doesn't really make sense there's really no need you should put it put it if you say you want to have four rows uh four rows yeah and then you have empty ones and then what happens is that you end up having a big space here, a big space under it so you don't want to do that so let's turn this off now to fix this what you should do is to go to the grid auto row now the grid auto row will set a minimum height for your row so let's say we go back to this postcard we had put a height on this okay so let's take the height away i'm going to take the height away save this go to the front end then we don't have any height again now what you do is that you go to the grid container and then go to the grid auto row so i'm going to put 300 pixel make sure you put the unit okay so if you want to use pixel if you want to use 30 ram anyone you want to use so but i'm going to use 300 pixel and then you can see that gives me that 300 uh pixel height for the row so now you have that 300 pixel height. If you take the inspection, so you can see that it fills up. So what we're going to do is that we're going to go back. And now because we don't have a height here, we're going to add a height of 100%. And that is going to solve our problem. Now you can control the height of the smallest div using this. Now let's say we want to take this down to 200. Okay, just make it that. So you can now see that we have that 200 pixel and this grows now the beautiful thing about this is that if you had this grows and aligns exactly as the last one irrespective of the gap so even if i go in here and i increase the gap to a bigger gap 
then we come to the front and as the gap increases this aligns to this a lot of times this uh, kind of design is for when you're using images like this and you want the large image to align to where the small the second image here is now it appears we have solved the problem right okay all right so let's introduce an image into the design so i'm going to uh, select this block and then i'm going to drop an image and then i'm going to select the featured image okay let's see uh oh why what again what again now you see another problem another problem comes up now like i told you working with grid can be very very tricky especially in diff in certain circumstances for example we intro now everything was looking great until we introduced the image and everything just goes bonkers you can see what i'm saying so uh when you think that oh it is easy all right it's i mean someone's maybe someone posts this and says how can i achieve this kind of grid easy just do it you know span to span to rows span to column that's that's all and the person goes and span to rows span to columns and then what again am i supposed to do so you see that images of different sizes number one number two they some of them overflow you can see this one grows and overflows so what do you do now in a, in this case so you said all right now this one doesn't even feel the parent so let's say okay let's make this image a hundred percent width so let's go there you say all right let's make it a hundred percent width okay make it a hundred percent width okay a hundred percent width but then it's feeling every way it's pushing everything out it's not looking great what can i do one way to solve this problem uh you're going to make this image also a hundred percent height now we've done that 100% height solves the overflow issue but now that 100% height pushes this post title wrapper outside the grid you see it's moving it outside the grid completely and it's pushing it into where the gap is supposed to be so uh, let's first of all deal with this squishing here this uh, skewing by going to object fit cover okay object position 50 50 is fine so now what how do you solve this particular one now we've solved the problem of it overflowing how do you deal with this now one way to deal with this is to come here to the block now this works if you have a wrapper on your image so you have a block and the image is inside a block if the image is outside this is not going to work so to solve this problem you have to place the image inside the block so i would strongly advise that you place this image inside a container a div or a block now i'm going to go and set that up to uh, display the position relative not display position relative and then i'm going to set this image to position absolute and you can see uh, already we have a, a problem solved because the image is 100 percent width and 100 percent height it takes up the width and the height of its parent without pushing out uh, the seat, you know, without pushing out this outside the grid because images are very stubborn. Images are just notorious for causing issues. So what do you think? If you found this video useful, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any other awesome tips I bring your way. So that is the solution to solving this kind of issues with grid layout that has to do with images. So right now you see that these, you know, aligns properly. So if you want to say, okay, this cast, you want them to be taller, you go to the grid parent and then you go to the auto rows and then you say, let's make this uh, 300. Make it 300, go there, see 300. Everything aligns properly, no issues. And then if you want to do your breakpoint, you can always go into your breakpoint and change your grid. So let's say here we want to have grid 2. Okay, we want to have grid 2. We have grid 2. Let's save that and see how it looks on the front end. So uh, I'm going to go responsive. Now, <laughs> and now we see another problem here. This problem could be specific to bricks. So you choose grid 2 and it's supposed to work, but something wonky happens. And like, where did this come from? This is not even a grid issue. This is some crazy because grid 2 is supposed to work. Why? Because this span, the first one spans 2, you know, so it's supposed to work. So what you do is that you go into, now let's see, what's the problem? We're having a problem with this. So um, if I go into this postcard, now the postcard is displayed as flex. Now, so if you go here, you'll notice that it has a flex wrap of wrap. Now let's go to the top breakpoint. Now the default should be this. So I'm not quite sure why. So if I set the default to that, and then go back here it still doesn't work but if i come here now let's let's clear that out no need to do that 
But if I come back here and then set this wrap to no wrap, automatically it just solves the problem. Whatever reason that is. Let's let's remove that. If I set this like this, it just still doesn't work because it's supposed to stack vertically. It doesn't work. That's why I said this could be a brick specific issue. But if you, if you have this kind of issue, just come here and set this to no wrap and save it. And you're going to have your problem fixed. So you have that grid. Now, if you ever want to change it uh, up at the lower breakpoints, you can always change change it up at the lower breakpoint. But for here, I, th I say this is great. And I can just make this uh, the, the grid sizing a bit smaller at that breakpoint, you know, to accommodate. So that is kind of like a, a complete bootcamp on solving these uh, difficult grid layout issues where you see a very simple grid layout for some reason things just get really difficult and also if you want to have access to some of my in-depth tutorials right now i'm a guest instructor in kevin gary's inner circle i have a link in the description so if you want to join the inner circle to have access to my in-depth tutorials click the link in the description and join the inner circle you're not only going to have access to my tutorials you're going to have access to kevin's tutorials and any other guest instructor in the inner circle there's a lot of a lot of useful uh tutorials not just the tutorials but a lot of snippet a lot of com i mean the community is great we have over a thousand two hundred people in the inner circle all of them are contributing a lot of expert there uh things you don't see on facebook groups some really useful tips in there so click the link below and join the inner circle to have access until next time have a great day bye